Welcome back to another episode of Excuse My Grandma. It's Kim and my co-host. Grandma Gail. Live from New York City. Live from New York, the city that never sleeps. <laughs> Kim, we had some really good days here together, uh, but I'm going to air some complaints after we talk about what we've done because I've really become a critic now of New York and I want somebody to listen to me. First in New York City... We, well, you came down a day earlier than I did, saw your friends and did your appointments. And then I came down and right away we did somebody else's podcast, Lindsay Metzler, who has the podcast We Met at Acme, which is about New York City dating. We went downtown to Chinatown. Yeah. But which it's, was so much fun because I remember years ago walking the streets with my mother and then eating dim sim down there and it brought back a lot of memories. Well, we were walking around here like, this is where you to get our fake watches or fake bags and stuff and I was like I think they're still selling them they were they were dying to sell them to us yesterday (laughs) they were running after us asking to buy their bags but we did not do that um but we had a good podcast with her that was fun um to do someone else's and be in like a studio and then uh that night we went to see a Broadway show we saw some like it hot which I thought was terrific uh yeah I thought it was Good as well. Uh, we both love the film. Well, I some of the, the film was great. Which I was mean, like, you, you know, a 50s or 60s movie. With uh, Jack Lemmon and Tony Curtis. And, and Marilyn, Marilyn Monroe. Monroe. So we love that movie. Um, the, the musical was a little bit different, but more or less the same storyline. They definitely made it more modern with like some transgender identity stuff in there. Um, but it was really cute and heartwarming. We thought... The music was fine. Uh, the music was, was good. I thought the dancing was spectacular. Yeah. The tap dancing tap. was really, mm-hmm. they were very talented dancers. I and always am like, why do I not top, tap dance? But it's not of lack of trying. Like we it's did. very ha- hard. Well, we put me in tap lessons when for. You were very little. Yeah, but probably for like three or four years. Yeah, I think you were Mickey Mouse or Minnie Mouse. And oh, I was things. Minnie Mouse for I something. I loved your costume. Your costume was better than, your, than the way you danced. Yeah, probably true. Uh, but, what was that called? Tap. I don't know because I feel like I know a lot of girls who I'm still friendly with who actually did that as well. <laughs> um, nobody, nobody became a movie star. No, actually, some person's like a singer, I think, but I guess not a tap dancer. Anyway, uh, we thought that show was good. The show was great, but Times Square is a mess. Yeah, a mess. I mean, I don't know what we can do to fix it. It's uh, it's crawling with all those uh, characters who are scary. Really obs- they're, they're not scary. They're just annoying. I never liked characters, even at I Disney know. World. They scare me because I know that there is a human inside of there sweating their balls off. Well, act- they're looking to get money but yeah. to take a picture with you. That's the whole point. Yeah, it's like cr- it's like a sh- CD and like... Like, I know that the motivation is not what it seems to be. Well, it wasn't. It was originally, I think, it's supposed to be cute and people walking around identifying with Disney characters. Yeah. But then it became really bad. No. So, but beside them, the the whole area got dirty. and It's not a new thing that Times Square is like this. I mean, maybe you haven't been much, but at least the last five years. Well, for three years it was closed, so we didn't have any of it. Before COVID started, because the theaters were all closed, I don't think anybody really went to Times Square. Maybe a few people, but it wasn't very, there was no business there. Yeah, but it's been all open for probably like two, a a little over a year maybe. And uh, so I guess I've I've gone to maybe three or four shows since it's open. The last time was my first Broadway show. Since years. COVID? Uh-huh. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, I don't know. I For as long as I can remember in recent history, it's pretty much the same. You don't want to necessarily walk through there unless yeah, you're going to a to show. I used to go all the time by myself, even to theater. I used to take my car, park in a parking lot, walk to the theater. I never thought about it as a single woman. Now, last night, I even said to you, <clears throat> there's no way that I would go here by myself. Yeah. It just, you know, it's gotten really sleazy. But anyway, the show was great. We enjoyed it. And of course, somebody recognized the two of us oh, with yeah. our masks on. They yeah, recognized true. Us, which was so funny. And, uh, but well, it's was probably the sweet. way we were like yelling at each other. No, no. like just t- talking. Maybe they recognized our voices. Well, they, we were certainly, we were, they were behind us. So either that or they recognized The back our of hands. our heads. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was fun. I always like when people say hi. And we had a, a good night and then we rec- recorded some podcasts, filmed some videos. 
And then you're headed back to Florida and I'm staying in New York for a week or so. I'm so jealous. I'm so jealous because there's so much, there really is so much going on in the city. And uh, I'm really not going over. I wanted to go over to the Met Museum and see the show that's there. I really didn't have enough time because I was so busy running back and forth. I I know. know I feel like I always think I have nothing to do. And then I'm like, oh, wait, I'm busy every night for the next two weeks. Exactly. That's exactly correct. The thing for me, though, is I, I just feel like nights go up quickly because is most people I know are like in their offices all day so then it's like you have to book them out farther in advance it's not like you could see everybody in one day like right. you have one night for one person so it's like always a little hard to schedule whereas I feel like you can just have lunch with one of your friends you can make an activity with them you can kind of like do more well I did do that I did see two old friends uh, mm-hmm. this week we went to a delicious little French bistro on 63rd street mm-hmm. which I love and uh, I had my mustard chicken which is the best little chicken in the world and there's a truck on the street on 63rd street that I also took out food from so there it's the most fabulous little block if you want if you feel like walking by and getting a sandwich or, or anything from that truck. He's terrific. But the restaurant was great. We had a wonderful lunch. I played cards one day with some friends. I saw some people I haven't seen in like three months, so that was fun. Um, but I actually am going back to Florida, and tomorrow night I'm going to a wedding reception. So uh, we had this on our... Of an older couple, right? Not well, someone... Not, but not both of them are an old. One is the, the man is a little older than the woman. But lot. they're not 30. No, they're not 30. Yeah. This is not their, it's, it's actually her first marriage. Oh. It's her first marriage, but not his. Okay. It's his second. But they said in the invitation, wear something sparkly. So I've been going through all the, my closet looking for something sparkly that isn't like 30 years old. And I really am I'm hard pressed to find anything that I love that I much. I know. I think I really only have one sparkly item in my closet. When somebody puts some, a, a dress code on an invitation, I panic. I, I don't know why, but I get so frustrated and I end up never doing the right thing. But now I found a sparkly sweater. It's all right. Would I wear it? I don't think I've worn it in six years, yeah. but I'm giving it a retrospective. It's going on and uh, I hope it, it suffices uh, because I couldn't find anything else. I really wanted to get a dress with lots of sparkles on it, but I don't have one. I think it's easier when parties set a theme because then it... You do? Yeah, because then you feel like everyone's kind of on the same level versus is like I'm like oh I just wore whatever was in my closet and then someone looks like really cool and I'm like oh why well, now didn't... everybody's gonna not look cool <laughs> yeah I guess <laughs> now everybody is not looking cool and then I also have a luncheon coming up that they told me to wear either pink or green so now I'm I'm I honestly I'm, I'm like so frustrated but I do think I have an ugly green dress I'm just gonna oh. put it on um but it's so funny I have a million th- yeah I have yellow I have you do wear color. a lot of color I I have things in my in my closet down in Florida that are colorful but somehow it's never the right color so right. I don't know what to do anymore. It'd be easier if they just say a white party. White is good. I'm sick of white parties. Oh, right. I feel like I've gone to like five. I will, any yes, o- you have, any other theme but a white party, I'm good with. So all right. so that's my week this week. So I, I'm sort of mm-hmm. looking forward to all these events. Yeah. It'll be fun. And I'm going I'll give to give you a review of my uh, my outfits. Yes, let me know. I'm going to a random party tonight. I'm going to stop by, I don't know, someone like invited me on Instagram and I'm bringing my friend, but we have a lot of mutual friends. I think it'll be fine. Okay. All right. Well, just, uh, you know, be careful, have fun. I have no idea what to wear though, because it's raining. Well, I I, I would say you're going to wear pants and a sweater because it's really not a very pretty day here. Yeah, I guess. Or boots and a dress. You could always wear high Um, boots if you have. I'll deal with it later. Right. Uh, and then, yeah, I'm in New York for a week or so, and then I'm going to Sundance, um, the film festival in Utah for the weekend. That's going to be so... Now, uh, where in Utah is is Sundance exactly? It's like both in Park City and oh. Salt Lake City, I think. So you could go see the Tabernacle Choir, uh, the uh, the church there that's so fabulous in Salt Lake City. I don't think we're going to be near there. I oh. think we're more in like the mountains. Oh. Yeah, but I don't think it's that far. I think if, if the girls go skiing and the guys go skiing, you could go take a, an Uber and go into town and and really see that it's really a wonder maybe i'm hoping to see a film or two it was very hard to like get tickets online i kept refreshing i don't know i i got something so we'll see all right um 
And I mean, I got a pack, uh, warm clothes. Oh, I looked up the weather this morning because I had nothing to do early this morning. In Utah, next weekend, the high is going to be 31. But they say sunny, but it's going to be cold. So you have to layer. Yeah. I mean, no matter what Well, you all take. I've been ordering online is like warm clothes stuff since we've been in Florida. And we posted this video on TikTok um, and Instagram where we're going through stuff that I ordered from Revolve. Right. And there was this green dress that I tried on. <laughs> that grandma hated right away I but I've, I've never seen so many overwhelming comments of you guys saying that you loved it and how good it looked so I reordered it she's <laughs> such a creature of of, of your p- telling her what to do this is this top on her looked awful but we'll see if it's a size small or maybe it yeah. won't be as or bad or maybe we can take it in a little I don't know I've never gotten so many comments saying something looked good well, so the I was like the color was very pretty yeah yeah see people fall in love with the color yes uh, but they don't look at the, how the dress actually looks so right. I think you're going to have to rethink this whole outfit right one or two podcast episodes ago we were talking about wedding registries because my family friend was saying they didn't know what to put on their registry since they already live together and And ask for suggestions from all of you to help us tell them so let's see kim what were the responses you got a lot of people actually said that they've seen couples want to give um, gifts towards their honeymoon fund. Really? Yes, or specific outings on their honeymoon. So then I think a check. I think that read that then you have to give a check. You can you can pay for a dinner on your honeymoon, so you have to give them some kind of uh, money, um, you know, in a gift card. Then that seems to be uh, what a lot of people would like to do, and mm-hmm. I, I actually agree with them. And a lot of people said that they also do like experiences, like a staycation at a hotel or a gift certificate to a nice restaurant, like activities that you could do with the person. Okay, well, I don't know if that's so good, but all right. And some people were saying, you know, you could still, even if you have things together, you could still kind of do nicer items or accessories. Like maybe it's a frame or maybe it's a well, that's what I think cheese so. fondue pot or something right. like a set of st- um, sterling. You know, I, I think a little what we said last week, which I happen to think is the right answer, is go one step higher. In other words, don't you've got a, a whole thing in your apartment of glassware and, and dishes, but you don't have the party type. So, you know, register for something that you might use 10 years from now for a dress up uh, occasion or for, you know, a more formal time of your lives. Mm-hmm. But there were also a lot of people saying that they don't like the idea of giving a check that that seems like impersonal, I guess. I- well, Im- personal or they're just put off by that like come celebrate us and our union and both by the way like we want cash no 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 I don't think anybody says that yeah but I just think if you if you feel it's not a, a bad choice I don't think anybody ever asks for it mm-hmm. I, right yeah you know, I, I think they misunderstood what we said I don't think anybody asked for the check but I think it is always a thing that people could use mm-hmm Okay, we are going to answer some listener questions that people on social media wrote in for us to answer all about dating. Um, Okay, someone asked, would you have married someone that your mom did not approve of? Would I have? No, actually. And I had a boyfriend and my parents didn't approve and I didn't marry him. No, I think knowing what I know today, I probably would have disregarded what my parents said. But in the 50s and 60s, you sort of, had to listen to your parents it was just what was the norm this is a hard one how do you politely end a first date that you're not into i don't think you can you really can't (laughs) the thing is you can shorten it a little like sometimes i've said if someone's like oh should we get another round i'll either say something like you know what, I have an early morning tomorrow. Um, so I, I would rather just get the check now if that's okay. I'm really sorry to like cut things short. Right. Um, or like, you and know. And offer to pay. That's a perfect place to say, you know, I'd love to p- uh, split the bill with you. I feel very uh, sad about ending our night so early. And then it gets you off a guilt trip. Yeah, that's true too. I never thought about that. Um, but yeah, you can't just walk out in the middle of the day. Unfortunately, you have to stay probably at least 45 minutes to an hour. When is it appropriate to introduce a boyfriend to family, friends, or coworkers? Uh, those are all three very different uh-huh. things. I um, agree. I would say friends come first. Yeah, because you could just be dating and you'd like your friends to like him as well. I do that actually before I'm boyfriend and girlfriend 
usually with someone like I like when I can see how are they with my friends or in social situations like do I still gravitate toward them or do they like do my friends like them like that's important to me but I'm gonna say something that's gonna sound crazy if you like someone and you take them to your friend group and they're not actually crazy about him or her I would take it in as a grain of salt and not let it color you completely because you're not going to probably see those same friends 15 years down the road. Sometimes Mm -hmm. they're coming with a different set of opinions. Same thing as the last question we said. Um, Same thing. If you all hang out and he was white girl wasted on the floor, um, then you listen to your friends when they say this is a problem. But if they're like, I don't know. Like he was on his phone a lot or he looked, he's not as cute as your last boyfriend. But everyone's smart. They know that not to listen to that stuff. Okay. Uh, east or west side? East side. What, living? Just like in general. I like the west side. And I live on the east side. Oh. I don't think it matters. I think wherever, or it could be downtown. Uh, yeah, it's different uptown or downtown. I would always say upper east and then for downtown west because I like west village more than like east village. Oh, and, and I must honestly say I don't think it matters. Wherever you live, there's so many cute neighborhoods in Every area, certainly in Manhattan, I'm sure in every city Mm -hmm. and in every town, there's a good side and a bad side, not to worry. Mm -hmm. What do you think of a guy who follows a lot of other women on Instagram? I dump him. Even if they're like people he doesn't know? like No, there's something wrong with somebody who's trolling. Trolling is like yes, they're looking. They're looking around, and that that's not, if you're if, you know if he and why would you know that anyway unless he's telling you that you can see who someone follows. Oh really? Yeah, like I could go to anyone's account and see who they're following. Well, if they're following it after they've made a commitment to you, you right? Know, he's allowed, after he's course. allowed to, to uh, or she's allowed to date whoever she wants and look at whatever pictures they want. But if they're saying, you know what, I think we're really a good fit. Then and he's still looking on the internet. There's something wrong. Mm-hmm. Uh, was your wedding large? They to- they're talking to me. I yeah. guess. Well, <laughs> yes, it was very large. It was very nice. It was beautiful. It was at the plaza. I was very. Ner- I was 21 years old. I didn't know what was going on. They let the pigeons f- fly out of the doves, whatever they mm-hmm. were, to at the uh, after the ceremony. It was so hammy, but it was beautiful, and uh, it is something you do remember. But I think a lot of emphasis is sometimes placed on the wedding and uh, a little too much. Uh, if you're, you know, if you can't afford a big wedding, there's nothing wrong with a small little private ceremony with family and a couple of friends. Uh, I don't go along with it anymore because it's too, ex- it's very expensive in today's world. So I think whatever you can feel comfortable doing, that's what you should do. Someone asked where to eat in Venice because they're going in oh. 2023. Um, I liked this restaurant, Da Evo. Da Evo. Da, and then da all, Evo. That was wonderful. And then also Harry's Bar. Oh, Harry's Bar is, is, a is still the best one. And then, um, yeah, there are loads of little cute little restaurants all along the little streets. And you never get a bad bowl of pasta mm-hmm. or a piece of fish. Venice is delicious food. Prenup or no prenup? Well, I think uh, for me, if I had no big assets at the time you're marrying, then you don't need from either side. You don't need a prenup. If somebody has something in there, um, they own a house or they have a lot of stock in their own name that they they've developed over the years. Those things should be part of a prenup. Uh, but other than that, you know, it's stuff that you had before you were together. Uh, after that, I don't think you should have restrictions. Uh, I'm not a big believer on that. But the, the truth is, every family is different, and it, and it depends on each individual family. But when it gets too crazy, you better think twice about it. How do you stay so energized, Grandma? I don't know. I, I think that's just my roots. My mother was the same way, and so was my grandma. My grandma was in her 80s, and she was traveling around the world. Mm-hmm. So I think that's just something that comes with the uh, the genes. And also, I guess, staying relevant, right? And like oh, doing yeah. things that... And I like to know what's going on yeah. in the world. Yeah. I'm very big on that. Mm-hmm. I like to I like to read the paper. I read the paper. I listen to the news. I'm, I don't want to be one of those people that's just sitting around doing nothing, talking about... Maybe their uh, their silly things like uh, their uh, card game, <laughs> which now isn't so silly anymore because now I, I take it very seriously if I lose a lot of money. Someone asked, how can I date new people if I live in a small town where I already know everyone? 
Well, that's that is hard. That is hard. Uh, but there, um, you might have to move away. <laughs> it's it's not easy in a small town. But usually, the pluses on that is that you know people for who they are. There are some really, I'm sure, nice people th- in your town. And um, look a little deeper into who they are. They might really be the perfect person for you. And uh, maybe. If there is like go to the nearest city, like I don't know how far that could be. Well, but sometimes they're in a very rural area, so it's not so easy. But they certainly could take a weekend trip somewhere, I guess, to the closest yeah place. That See they- if you fall in love. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't I don't think it's an easy thing. I think if you live in a small town, you have to live with who's in your community. If you want to stay in that small town, if you want a different life, then that's a different story. What is the longest you should date before moving on? So guessing like if the if it's not going forward, if no, if you're not becoming exclusive. Are they asking me or they're asking you? I guess both of us. Um, me? If after three months somebody says they're not serious and they really want to date seriously and you feel the same way, you both have to feel the same way. I would say three, three, four months of dating somebody really on a steady basis, not once every three weeks. Or right. Once, that's you know, what that's I was going to say. Another, another thing, you know, somebody might not live in the same city as you mm-hmm. and they come in infrequently and you really like them. So you can't judge that on a time basis. But, you know, you know when when you've had enough dating and you want to go to the next step and it has to be mutual yeah that's kind of what I was going to say of it's less about timing because everyone does have a different pace right. and more about um h- how like deep it's gotten like how quick and like when you're going to have those conversations if really like if with you're with obsessed other. with someone and you've been spending every day together for a few weeks I would say that's enough time right. to have that conversation of where is this going or or do you want to just be exclusive i think you have to go in other words now you're not going to see anybody mm-hmm. anymore and then once you're not seeing any more of anybody else and depending on your age we're not talking about 21 year olds i think then the next step is and in, 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 after a few months mm-hmm. you should move in together and that i would not make a prolonged period i mean six months of living together is more than enough to know if this is marriage yeah. material and to see if both people mm-hmm. really want to get married you know that's timing in life is everything as we've discussed uh, very often and you can't live indefinitely with somebody until they're ready so if they have no idea of where the next step should be you might have to step back so someone said if you know a guy is not the one but you are having a lot of fun should you keep going or move on well why is he not the one if you're having fun exactly Exactly. unless maybe he's like well maybe unemployed and not or they might not have a sexual link yeah but if they're having a lot of fun well fun doesn't mean sex have you had good sex? If you've had good sex and you're having fun, that's your ninety percent home. Yeah, I would, I guess, maybe revalue what you what you envision want. of the one exactly. because, like, why are they not the one? The one. <laughs> okay, someone said, should you always tell someone if you like them? How do you get over the anxiousness? Oh, I don't. I I think that's a conversation that has to have almost come about naturally. I mean, if you're seeing somebody. For a, for a long time, uh, with a long time, I don't mean a long time, let's say seven, eight, nine dates, and you're also perhaps having a sexual moment with them as well, I think you have to look at each other and say, you know, I guess I really like you. Uh, I, 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 but it has to be a mutual liking. Um, That's the thing. What it, so let's say they're not if even they're not, dating. If, like what if it's like a friend or a coworker, but you like them and you're just like nervous to tell them or it's like maybe they're in high school and it's not just like that and they're just, you know, friends or friends with benefits. Um, I think it's going to eat you alive if right. you don't say it, but you have to be really careful about how you say it. I like agree. you can't just be like, I've been in love with you this whole time, no. but like kind of test the waters, maybe like have some sort of conversation being like, and if he's resistant or she's resistant, I would step back yeah. and then reevaluate your thinking. Yeah. You can't force somebody, but no. like you both have to be no, ready at the right time, but you won't know if someone's ready unless you have that conversation. Or unless somebody, listen, I, I would say that, I, I remember in the old days, people would say, you know, I really am crazy about you. That's your entry. If you're not crazy about him, then you have to walk away. 
if you don't feel the same way. So I think it's usually, it's not a one-way street. Usually both of you have feelings. And uh, if you both are not on the same page, then the one person who's not has to step back. Mm-hmm. Well, we've covered, Kim, we've covered... Um, walking through the city. We've covered theater. We've covered, what else have we covered today? A lot of dating topics. Dating topics, dressing, (laughs) what I'm wearing uh, over the weekend. Mm -hmm. Um, So I think everybody has a full circle of what we've been up to the last uh, week. And um, I'm hoping uh, this week in January, you're not too cold, everybody. I know it's getting a little frosty up here. Um, But we haven't had any real snowstorms uh, in uh, New York. And um, so I think the winter is actually milder. I'm hoping that we miss all that snow from California. And uh, everybody just go out and have fun and walk in your neighborhoods and and, uh, enjoy yourselves. And that was another great episode of Excuse My Grandma. You know how to follow us. We're Excuse My Grandma on Instagram, TikTok. Share this with your friends, please. It helps us a lot. Rate us five stars if you haven't already. And we'll see you next week. Bye.